This is Ling 270, Language, Technology, and Society, Module 3, Decipherment. In this module, we'll talk about the decipherment of the Babylonian writing system. So the Babylonian language was a language that was represented with the cuneiform uh, writing system. And the reason that we uh, use this example decipherment in the textbook is that it shows this a uh, really important aspect of decipherment. Uh, which is namely uh, the process of independent verification. This is the process that we use to really determine if a decipherment is in fact the correct decipherment. Maybe how do we know that our educated guesses are really the correct ones? Uh, the best way is to use a process of independent verification. Um, so the, the, um, when the process of Babylonian decipherment had uh, uh, taken place, um, a bunch of archaeologists had this idea that well, why don't we all try to decipher uh, the Babylonian writing system separately and, uh, and not talk to each other and not share information with each other about how we're doing the decipherment. And then once we're done making our decipherments, we'll come together and compare what we have. And the idea was that if they were on the right track and if they were making the right educated uh, guesses, then their, um, uh, their um, uh, solutions should probably be uh, fairly similar to each other. If they made a, if they found uh, correspondences which just kind of happened to be correct, it's not likely that the other decipherers would would make those exact same uh, mistakes by chance. So, um, so that was the idea behind this uh, this kind of process of independent verification. Um, so, uh, so once these um, uh, these four archaeologists came back together, we uh, can notice that uh, these. Um, uh, resulting decipherments were very similar to each other. So Rawlinson said uh, that this text represents, then I went to the country of Komukha, which was disobedient and withheld tribute and offerings to Ashur, my lord. And Talbot said, then I advanced against Kumiki, land of the unbelievers, who refused to pay taxes and tribute unto Ashur, my lord. Uh, Hink said, at that time, I went to a disaffected part of Komukh, which uh, has withheld the tribute by weight and tail belonging to Asur, my lord. And finally, Uppert had said, in these days, I went to the people of Dumuch, uh, the enemy who owns, owed tribute and gifts uh, to the god Asur, my lord. So we can see that these uh, example decipherments are very, very similar to each other. We can see that the general uh, content of the message basically comes through uh, every time. And really the, the only kind of striking difference is uh, the uh, the spelling of the um, the place names so Komuka Komuki or Dumuk uh, so we can see that these um, uh, archaeologists disagreed on the exact way that the symbols represented sound information but we can see that they were likely on the right track and had found the um, uh, the right kind of uh, correspondences um, so since it would be very likely uh, if they had made the incorrect uh, um, uh, assumptions at the beginning that they would all happen to agree with each other. Uh, and the fact that they all agree with each other is a good evidence uh, that they uh, were on the right track for the correct uh, decipherment. So this process of independent verification using this process with um, these four archaeologists here or by applying a decipherment to a new artifact that you haven't seen before, that's something that is very, very important to ensure that a decipherment isn't in fact, the correct uh, decipherment. Otherwise, it's we're, uh, we have uh, likely what is called uh, pseudo decipherment. Um, so we'll be talking about those kinds of things in the lessons to come.